And we are back now with that bombshell interview in the New Yorker magazine. Donald Trump's ghostwriter for The Art of the Deal, Tony Schwartz, tells Jane Mayer that he's, quote, terrified of a Trump presidency, fears for the world if Trump has the nuclear codes. He's going to join us live after this report from ABC's Lindsay Davis. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. It may just be one of the most scathing reports yet about Donald Trump from a man who knows him well. Schwartz paints Trump as a, quote, liar without a conscience who stands for many things he hates. In the late 1980s, Donald Trump was the king of New York real estate. System. I've done well in the system. And in 1987, he topped the New York Times bestsellers list with his book, The Art of the Deal. The critically acclaimed memoir slash business advice book held the number one spot for 51 weeks. Its 367 pages gave an inside look into his success and portrayed him as the ultimate deal maker. And while many gave the book rave reviews, one person even dubbing it the most streetwise business book there is, some did point out it lacked a certain intimacy, a point mentioned in a 1987 interview with Bill Donahue. I must say there's there is some personal information in here. Not a lot, but it's an interesting look. I like to, you know, leave it out as much as possible. Well, that's this morning, the book's co-author, Tony Schwartz, says there's a reason for that. Tweeting, I wrote the art of the deal. Donald Trump read it. In an article published today by The New Yorker, Schwartz says in 1985, he spent 18 months getting to know him better than almost anyone outside of the Trump family, shadowing him every day, learning his voice so he could write Trump's bestseller, calling the process draining and deadening, adding, I put lipstick on a pig. I feel a deep sense of remorse that I contributed to presenting Trump in a way that brought him wider attention and made him more appealing than he is. Trump denies these claims, telling The New Yorker, he didn't write the book. I wrote the book. It was my book. Schwartz says it appears that over time, Trump has convinced himself that he was the one who wrote the book. And he says if he could lie about that, he could lie about anything. We did reach out to Donald Trump for comment, but did not hear back. George. Okay, Lindsay, thanks very much. And Tony Schwartz joins us now from New York. Mr. Schwartz, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's just get it on the record. You wrote The Art of the Deal. Donald Trump didn't. I wrote every word of it. Donald Trump made a few red marks when I handed him the manuscript, but that was it. I got to ask you about this sentence you said. I genuinely believe that if Trump wins and gets the nuclear codes, there's an excellent possibility it will lead to the end of civilization. That is an extreme statement. You know, it's a terrifying thing. I haven't slept a night through since Donald Trump announced for president because I believe he is so uh, insecure, so easily provoked, and not, not particularly nearly as smart as people might imagine he is. And in the face of somebody like Putin provoking him cleverly, because Putin's a heck of a lot smarter than Donald Trump, I do worry that with the nuclear codes, he would and civilization as well, we give, know it. Give us one concrete example of why it would lead you to that kind of anxiety from your 18 months with him. Well, he has an incredibly short attention span. He was unable to do interviews with me past 10 or 15 minutes so that finally I had to sit in his office and pick up a uh, phone by the uh, eight feet away from his desk to listen in on his call so I could turn this into a book. The idea that we'd have somebody with a tiny attention span, my two-year-old grandson has a longer attention span than Donald Trump is, is itself terrifying. This is a complex and difficult world, as we know, just from the events of the last week, George. I know that Donald Trump called you after you read this article, said you were disloyal, hung up and said, have a nice life. But let's uh, talk about some of the points that he and his supporters will make. Number one, you kept your silence for an awful long time, for years. For more than a decade, you collected millions of dollars on this book. You're a lifelong liberal, as you say. You've given money to Democrats year after year after year. You have an agenda. You know, I do have an agenda, and the agenda is about Donald Trump's character. It has nothing to do with his ideology. He has no ideology. He's not a person who has beliefs except the belief that he himself should prevail in the end. So really what I'm talking about is character, and every American ought to be concerned about his character. Every if that's, yep. if that's the case, why keep your silence for so long? 
because we had a successful experience together. I never in a million years thought he would run for president. Had I thought that 30 years ago, I wouldn't have written the book. But for 29 years, I didn't think he would, and it didn't seem like it was important to speak out. I now feel it's my civic duty. I have nothing to gain from this. I've made a decision and already have given every dollar of my royalties I've earned over the last year since he announced for president to a series of nonprofit causes aimed at the people whose rights Donald Trump wants to abridge, immigration, immigration groups and the like. You wrote, you, you wrote, you said in the past that nothing you wrote in the art of the deal was on its face false. Do you stand by that? You know, no, I suspect there are quite a number of things that were false. I mean, right in the middle of while I was writing this book, he was telling me about these great stories about his three casinos and how successful they were, while at the very same time, all three of them were going bankrupt. So no, it's full of falsehoods. You regret writing the book? I do regret writing the book. Had he not run for president, I wouldn't regret writing the book. But if in any way this contributes to his being elected president, you know, I think this, this is a man who has more sociopathic tendencies than any candidate in my adult life that I've observed. And so, yeah, I do regret writing the book. Tony Schwartz, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.